You see, uh, from this Nikkei Convention of 325, 1,257 years have passed. So the discrepancy have accumulated, this uh, per year discrepancy times 1,257, that's 9.8 days. That's about 10 days. So in 1582, 4th of October was followed by 15th of October. First correct the mistake, OK? And <clears throat> in fact, now in the internet, there are these uh, uh, beautiful sites called, uh, one, is, one of them is called timeanddate.com, or maybe dateandtime.com, I can, I can never remember. But if you go there, you can give the name of a country and name of a year and, and can see the calendar. So go there and type Italy, 1582, October, you will see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 15, 16. It's not advisable for little children who are learning their numbers, OK? Uh, now there's a new rule to prevent future problem also. The new rule is that if the year is divisible by 100, according to Julius's rule, it should have been a leap year. But the new rule is that don't make it a leap year, let it pass another test. Now you see whether it's divisible by 400. And if it is, then make it a leap year. If it is not, then don't make it a leap year. So for example, 1700, 1800, 1900 should not be leap years. I have written two nots here. That much of emphasis was not necessary. That's a mistake. <laughs> OK, um, uh, should not be leap years, but 2,000 will be leap years, OK? 1,600 will be leap year. You see, this is a beautiful um, exercise in diplomacy. See, this was going on in 1582. So made, they made the rules such that 1,600 is not affected. It's just like Julius's rule. The first change will be in 1,700. 118 years from then. And of course, they will be, at that time, completely out of reach. Okay? So beautiful diplomacy, and it was done. So now, the average length of the year after the reform is 365 plus, consider a, a cycle of 400 years. According to Julius, there would have been 100 leap years in this cycle, but now three of them have been removed by this rule. So 97 out of 400. So that's 365.2425 days. That's pretty close to 365.2422, but it's still not perfect. There's still a discrepancy of 0 0.0003 days per year, which means one day in 3,333 years, roughly. Okay. So you can ask, of course, what are we going to do with that? And I don't know whether there has been any um, a decision which has been taken on that. But I think the humankind has done something very clever to address this problem. They have started using the planet in a way that it doesn't last for 3,000 years from now. And for probably even 300 years is a far cry, OK? So this problem will not arise. You see, very clever. Now what happened to the Gregorian calendar in 1582? The Catholic countries, Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, they adopted it immediately. They were directly under the pope. 1583, Switzerland, Netherlands. 1584, Catholic Germany. Germany was not one country at that time. There's part of which Catholic and part Protestant. Martin Luther has already arrived on the scene. So the Catholic uh, Germany took it, but the Protestants didn't take. They said, oh, this came from the Pope. Pope is Catholic. Why should we take it? But more than 100 years later, in 1700, they realized that, well, OK, I mean, maybe this came from Pope, but this is something universal. So they accepted the reform. 1752, oh my god, the thing that you call English calendar. 
I have been talking about it for the last 20 minutes, and this is the first time the name of England came. It, the reform that happened in 1582, for 170 years they did not even look at the reform. After 170 years they said, oh, okay, we should wake up. And then they accepted the reform. So you see, not only did they not do anything for the calendar, they also didn't even take it when it was proposed. So if you say that this is an English calendar, then very well, you can find a, 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 a Roshagolla store in Ludhiana and say that it's a Punjabi suite. Fine, go ahead. Now, <clears throat> by 1752, the discrepancy has increased to 11 days because 1700 year has passed, which was different. So September 2nd was followed by 14th. So there are nice uh, mysteries based on this thing. For example, Newton's birthday. In some books, you'll find it was 25th of December, 1642. In some other books, you'll find 5th of January, 1643. And I happened to actually read both of these uh, dates when I was a very young child. And uh, of course, I, at that time, I thought that uh, such a great person should be allowed at least two birth dates, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> then I realized uh, when I grew older that that's not the case. 25th December was his birthday according to the calendar that was being used in England at that time. But had they corrected the calendar in due time, his birthday should have, should have been on the 5th of January of 1643, okay? So, of course, there are many uh, countries in between. I cannot possibly go through all of them. 1918, it was Russia. After the Bolshevik Revolution, Lenin realized that the Russian calendar is still the old calendar, and the discrepancy by that time was 13 days. So 31st January was followed by 14th of February. So again, there are the similar kind of mysterious things, like the Russian Revolution Day, whether it was 25th of October it started or 7th of November. Both are correct by two different calendars, okay? And there are many other countries which adopted this calendar in, in between and also later. But I will not go through that list. I will go through a different calendar, Islamic calendar. The Islamic calendar, as I have already said, it's the only major existing lunar calendar, that's a guarded statement. As far as I know, it's the only existing lunar calendar. The average length of the year is 12 synodic months, which is 12 times this 29.5306. So that's 354.3672 days. So individual years, of course, cannot be fractions. So it's either 354 days or 355 days. They have some rule of making that. So the difference with the solar year is 11 days. So this calendar actually moves by 11 days with respect to the seasonal cycle. Now, how does it move? Well, let us see the, the, the date of the Idul Fitr in the Gregorian calendar. In the Islamic calendar, Eid al-Fitr is at the end, after the end of the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is the Arabic word. In Persian, it's Ramzan. So we call it Ramjan. Now, these are the dates. Start from the bottom. In 1998, Eid al-Fitr was on 30th of January. 1999, 20th of January. So see, it has moved 10 days, 10 or 11 depending on the uh, rounding off. Next day, uh, sorry, uh, next year it has moved um, on to the 9th of January in 2000. Now there's an interesting thing. From 9th of January, if you count 354 days, you don't go in the next Gregorian year. It's still the Gregorian year, same Gregorian year, 28th of December. 
So in the year 2000, in the Gregorian calendar, there were two Idul Fitr's. Okay? And then, uh, again, it was shifting always, 10 or 11 days. Here I have until 2011, that was 31st of August. So homework for, for you, today when you go home, don't look at the calendar, just calculate what the Idul Fitr date would be in 2018, and then check the calendar to see if you are right. Basically, you have to subtract 11 a few times. So this is what happened to a lunar calendar, how happens to a lunar calendar. <coughs> now I'll go to lunisolar calendars. And for this, I will take the Gregorian dates for Dasera or Vijaya Dashomi, if you want to say here. Yeah. Now, <coughs> this time, uh, this time we, we, we go this way. I don't know why I did it this way, but anyway. Uh, in 1997, it was 11th of October. Next year, 1st of October. So you see again, 10 days it has shifted. But now what happens, now is the difference with the lunar calendar. It will not go again another 10 days to the front. Rather, one month will be introduced in between so that it falls behind. So it should have come 11 days forward, but one month has been introduced. So 29 days has been introduced, have been introduced. So as a result, it will go 18 days to the back. So from the 1st of October, 18 days to the back, 19th of October. Then 11 days again comes forward. Then again another month. So goes back 18 days, 26th. Okay? And then again 10 days, uh, 11 days, 10 days in front, again goes back and so on. It goes on like this. Okay? So every now and then you introduce one full month so that at an average, the Vijaya Dashami is in late September to late October. Okay? Now, <clears throat> you will ask, when are these months inserted? So this is the intercalation of a month. So how often the months are intercalated? Roughly once in three years, because the discrepancy is 10 or 11 days, multiplied by three is roughly one month, but the word roughly is important because it's actually too rough. So <coughs> remember that one year was 12.3683 months. <coughs> now if I really take once in three years, that will make a one third of a month extra. So that's 0.3333, not very close to 3683. So you'll have to find a fraction which converted into decimal is close to 3683. And that fraction is 7 over 19. <coughs> That's, as you see, is 3684, very close. So the intercalation, if you intercalate, intercalate seven months in every 19-year cycle, then it's fine. And that is what is done in lunisolar calendars. Now, how and when the months are added in the 19-year cycle? Would you have just first seven as more months and then the next uh, whatever, 12, without the 12 months? No. <coughs> there are different calendars which have different rules for this. And uh, it varies from one lunisolar calendar to another. Let me give you an example from the Hebrew calendar, the Jewish calendar. Uh, you see, the, uh, here is a 19-year cycle, 1 to 19. Uh, at the end of the first uh, year, there is so much of extra, 3, 6, 8, 3 months, and they do nothing. End of the second year, it doubles, they do nothing. At the end of the third year, it becomes three times and it actually exceeds one. So then they add another month. Okay? 
so that the excess is never very much. It's like spending from your bank account, at least when you are young, okay? You see, okay, I have to put some money in the bank account, but as soon as it exceeds 1,000, okay, I go to the restaurant and spend 500, okay? So, <clears throat> so it's like that. Uh, and it goes on. So the third, sixth, eighth, uh, whatever, all the other ones. So the, there are uh, seven total in the 19-year cycle. That's how the calendar goes. You know, this was coming. Here, I have to talk about the Bengali calendar. The Bengali calendar is not a lunisolar calendar like the calendar of most parts of India. I have mentioned that in the beginning, but I want to emphasize it again. It's a solar calendar. Uh, it follows the calculations of uh, astronomical text, which is called the Surya Siddhanta. It was written in 6th century AD. And according to the Surya Siddhanta, the the length of the year is 365.258756 days, uh, which is uh, 365 days, 6 hours, 12 minutes, etc., etc. So there's a discrepancy. You remember the, the other one was 5 hours, 48 minutes, something like that. So there's a discrepancy. And the discrepancy accumulates. What has it done to the Bengali calendar? See, the Bengali New Year's Day, which was supposed to be on the vernal equinox, that is on 21st of March. Now, in this 1400 plus years since the Surya Siddhanta, this excess has accumulated to 23 days. And because of that, you count 23 days from the 21st of March, you will get 15th of April. That's when we have our new year. You will ask, who told you so? Maybe the cal calendar makers originally planned it to be on 15th of April. No. How can you plan to be something on, 20, on 15th of April without having the Gregorian calendar with you? In order to fix something in your calendar, you need some astronomical phenomenon. The sun, the moon, something. You cannot say, okay, according to this other calendar, I will do it. That's copying. Okay? That's, that's not done. So they did it on the, on the vernal equinox, but it has shifted. And Rabindranath's birthday, Rabindranath himself has written, his birthday was on 6th of March. I understand that he didn't, uh, 6th of May, I'm sorry, 6th of May. I understand, of course, that probably he didn't remember the, the event very well, okay? But at least the people in his family remembered, and he must have heard it from them, right? So it was 6th of May. But because 157 years have passed, this accumulation has amounted to 2.6 days, so we are now celebrating it roughly on the 8th of May. Another 100 years, it will be 10th of May, and so on, if no correction is, um, is made in the calendar. Now, why is this discrepancy? Well, first of all, at the time of Surya Siddhanta, that was uh, 6th century, of course, the calculations, the observations, none of these things were very refined at that time, and that is understandable. But this is not the main reason for the discrepancy. The main reason was that those people who authored Surya Siddhanta, Aryabhata was the main person, he did not take into account the precision of equinoxes. And having said that, I must explain to you what is the precision of equinoxes. What are the equinoxes? You see, this is a picture of the Earth going around the sun. Uh, so this, is the, this, is, this represents the sun. And this is the earth in four different times. 
So, if you look at this point, you see the northern pole is closer to the sun than the southern pole. So, this is summer in the northern hemisphere, winter in the southern hemisphere. Here, it's just opposite. The south pole is closer to the sun, so it's a uh, summer in the southern hemisphere, winter in the northern hemisphere. In between, there will be two points when this axis of the earth, which is tilted, as you see, with respect to the orbit, this axis of the, of the, of the earth becomes perpendicular to the earth's sun joiner line. Or in other words, the North Pole and the South Pole will be equidistant from the Sun. Here North Pole is closer, here North Pole is further, so somewhere in between the two poles must have been equidistant. And those are the times which are called the equinoxes. There are two equinoxes, one is the vernal, which is the spring equinox, and the other is the autumnal. Now, and, and these two, the, the other extremes are called the solstices, so, uh, they're called Shankranti in Bengali. So, the summer solstice is uh, around 21st of June. Then the autumnal equinox is 21st of uh, September. Winter solstice, 21st of December. All of them are 21st? No, one of them should be 23rd, uh, anyway. And um, the vernal equinox is 21st of March, okay? Now, the problem is, this picture gives you an impression that the Earth's axis is fixed in the sky and the Earth is rotating like this, but it's not like that. It's like uh, Shankirtan. You just don't dance like this, you're also doing this. Okay. So the Earth's axis actually wobbles. And because it wobbles, there is some difference that is made. So let me summarize what happens. There are three motions of the Earth. One is the diurnal or the daily motion, which is around its own axis that we are not discussing. That is what determines the day. But then there is the annual, which is around the sun. But then there is a third one, which is the precision of the axis, the wobble of the axis. So big.